Hello, hello. Welcome to an Impossible Creatures replay commentary. It's your host, B-Champ, and with me I have uh, the amazing Marco. Hello, everybody. How are you doing? Uh, awesome. So I'm so excited go. today. Yeah, we're doing a Triples League uh, commentary of two teams. The Teluriax versus TSC. On the Teluriax is uh, Puglin, Kiki, and Renee. And then on TSC, there is, uh, who is it? Yagami, Skitter, yeah. and Elias, right? That's right. Yeah, that's yeah. definitely right. I'm so excited to see what these boys will bring to us. Because yeah. they're both very exciting teams, and we'll we're prepared to see some action. Yes, absolutely. So the triples league is a great semi-competitive league that players can no use to get in teams, we can um, put a stop to them by practice out strategies, that play each other. But it's not a tournament per se. There's not necessarily a bracket going on. So uh, every every team just plays everybody, and so we have. As you can see by the handles here, Elias TSC, Yagami TSC, Skitter TSC, all next to each other. And then we have uh, Kiki, Poglin, and Renee playing on Grove. Mm -hmm. That's right. 3v3 in Grove, classic, but always exciting. And I really want to see what the Seekers Cans have in store, like what they will bring to the play. Yeah, so what do you know about Skitter? Actually, nothing much because he's a pretty recent player, right? But I know he's been bringing up a lot. Like, he's a really good player. Uh, he's been playing the Tellurian campaign, uh, I think, and he's doing great in it too. So I'm really excited to see what he will do here in multiplayer. Yeah, definitely. So it looks like Renee Ready, is boy. scouting and sees Yagami with three lightning rods before level two, which is pretty ambitious, uh, if I have yeah. to say so myself. Skitter also coming out with Hello. a scout. Kiki content to go one rod, so there's a huge contrast in build wars. Yagami going for four rods! Four, four rods, rods before level two. Oh my two. god. Wow. That was my technique a, a while ago. It never worked out well in the end, but see if Yagami manages to do it. I mean, Yagami is <laughs> he can do anything. the best players in the game right now, so... Yeah. Um, here's he can Renee. bend the rules at his wheel. Yeah. yeah <laughs> precisely. Uh, here's Renee with a fast level 2, followed by Skitter. So they're facing off against each other, and both have creature chambers up. Skitter is taking out... STC88, which is an ant lobster. Ooh, are we going to see some Ooh. digging? 91 electricity. Skitter, you madman. Huge. Oh my god. Oh, here we have uh, Cuddle Wolf Coyotes coming out from Renee. And these uh -huh. are going to go straight to Yagami's base. What type? Oh, no. I guess they're actually just coming over here to uh, make sure to secure the expansion. I think it's a pretty good move. And we're seeing. Uh, this STC-88 just post Hello. up at Kiki's base. Ready, boys. Hanging out, and Kiki with the level 2 flyers coming out. These are... Oh. Pistol Shrimp Dragonflies, what? 12 oh. damage with Sonic, 53-17, wow. Yeah, like, they're spammy, but they're still 50 call per creature, so... <laughs> It's a lot of resources on level 2, but either way. But it looks like we have uh, Yagami coming out with an anti-air tower, so hopefully Kiki does not go for Yagami. In the meantime, Skitter is getting ready to go for Kiki here. We don't see a lot from... <laughs> uh -oh. <laughs> fuck you, fuck you, oh. fuck you, fuck you. <laughs> coming out these snail porcupines. <laughs> Absolutely oh hilarious. Uh, coming in with a strong <laughs> rush here, a double rush against Yagami. The very, very slow high defense regen porcupines coming out from Puglin. And the flyers are coming out to stop any attack that uh, Elias is trying to put on to Kiki with these horses. So we have a lot of really, this really good This game is already action. amazing. Yes. Oh my god. <laughs> 
And I is coming down with some uh, towers right now, but these flyers can easily transition targets. And it looks like they are. You can just look at the mini-map. What is going on? Um, oh, and it looks like Skitter's finally bringing out these 91 electricity lo lobsters. But mm, and Kiki's lo Yeah, flyers will counter that. Yeah. Yeah. These um, Kiki's having a little bit of trouble f finding a target for these dragonflies, but... Uh, Yagami's doing an excellent job at defending with these uh, hyena bullet spiders. Mm -hmm. And Kiki we will actually it. not make short work of these because the damage is all in the uh, melee, not actually in the sonic range attack. So, funny enough, <laughs> um, Kiki's not doing super oh, well yeah. here. <laughs> yeah, oh my god, that's true. Yeah, oh my <laughs> gosh. The flyers are actually getting taken down by all of these ranged units. Oh my goodness, you thought that mass of flyers was going to do something, but uh, now we're going to have to bring out the Dragonfly Oog Pisters. Instead, these are level 3 with Poison Artillery, Deflect. Uh, Yagami, in the meantime, is coming with a huge mass of units, uh, but these are all level 2s. If Pugling can get these level 3s out, it's going to do some real good, but... Uh, Kiki's being doubled right now, and this is not looking good. Kiki looks kind of dead. Yeah, I mean, his fires are, sorry Kiki, but they're extremely weak. Like, <laughs> if you you can just pass up a little bit of range, they'll be taken down without any hassle. So, oh. let's see if, no, if he can get saved cool by someone else. Here. There's nothing Kiki can do. It's game over. And yeah. Yakami's just moving in uh, to this double defended base, but... I'm not sure any of, I'm not sure this is a really good matchup. Um, Cause even though that Renee's has level threes and Puglin has level threes, Yagami just has so many units, uh, and the artillery are not going to do good against this melee. Oh and God. Kiki's getting mined at his base with a forward sound beam tower and anti air tower. Uh, yeah, Kiki is completely out of this game. Will is the only one that is left without being too far perturbed. Uh, but even sending in these rat... Are these elephants? No, these are these are rhinos. These are rat rhinos. Oh my god, look at their tail. Look how ugly that tail is. Oh, and he didn't even get the plague off. Oh, he's wow, not even using okay. plague with them. That is so sad. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Which is which Bizarre you would think combination. is the of Constable Cool Guy. <laughs> Doesn't have any though, if you look right into it. <laughs> yeah. Kiki barely surviving with just a couple water chambers of gen. I don't think Kiki can even convert right now. Um having to blow up its generator, I believe, or maybe that got destroyed. Or uh, not generator, water chamber. Mm. Uh, just for it's a little bit of cold for the workshop. Yeah, this is holy smokes. Uh, and, and Elias is pretty untouched over his base, doing a great um, job of controlling yeah. Kiki. And Skinner uh, yeah. doing a great job of keeping pressure as well. Uh, all three of the cans are pretty untouched. Like, Will is the only one who can really turn the tide here because he also hasn't been in battle. Like, not at his base directly, at least, but for his team, it's looking extremely rough. Yeah, this is looking rough. Uh, Renee really needs to take this position here. She does have this geyser, which is going to help over Yagami, but uh, Elias is just unchecked here. Two generators, uh, competitive generators, plus mining all of this coal over here. Looks like Elias is the MVP. Um, and another generator here. Oh my gosh. Just took all of it. The disrespect mining yeah. in Kiki's face also. Yeah, it's there's uh I don't think there's too much that Kiki can do to recover here. Actually it seems like he turned mm. off lab defense. He um, did. He just accepted his fate. Uh he's producing henchmen though. Okay. Yeah. I wonder what for. I mean oh he's actually he has uh Whoa. workshop in mid, didn't see that. And he's still building oh, he's these producing flyers. flyers. So oh my god. Die instantly. <laughs> oh gosh. The flight of poison is not worth it, I'm sorry to say. 
<laughs> strategy did not work out, and there's just so much going on on the minimap. I'm trying to keep up. Uh, it's my first time seeing these yeah. games, so I'm not exactly sure where to look, uh, if I must be honest, but I'm very excited because I was told they're great games, and I have not been disappointed at all with this first one. No. There's been a lot going on right off the bat, like right off the start, and yeah, it looks pretty promising. Like, I wonder what Kiki had in mind with these level two and level three extremely weak flyers. Like, it must have been a strategy, right? You can just mess this up and pretend to go against, uh, you know, ranged. They will take them down almost immediately. Yeah, it must I... have been a strategy. I think it was to fight against buildings because those barrier destroy pistol shrimp were, were going to be good against buildings, but the Sonic just doing three damage to ground units is not very effective, I'm afraid. Uh, Kiki yes. being allowed to live for a little bit longer. <laughs> Elias is feeling merciful tonight, yeah. Not taking Kiki down. Yeah, but this is this is unfortunately going to be over for um, the Teluriacs here. Getting beaten in their own game. Telurian mm, devs. Yeah. And there goes Kiki and Renee. That's must, must hurt. Imagine designing a game and then getting absolutely shredded in it. <laughs> oh gosh. Isn't that going to be the story? I mean, uh, I would say... Being in the tournament or league myself, uh, the sickest cunts with Yagami, Skitter, and Elias, I think they're possibly the strongest team in this tournament. Uh, yeah. Like, I, I think I think they are, actually. And this is just, it just shows it right here. Uh, really, really challenging team to fight against. And um, I, I think it's going to be an uphill battle for the Teluriacs coming up. Really, really strong game, though, and absolutely, uh, I, I think, I, I don't know, what, what would you say would be the, the thing that lost it for the, the Teluriacs here, if, if there's one thing, besides just playing an incredible team? <laughs> well, for starter, these are combinations and tactics, like, they didn't go, they didn't go really, uh, classic method they went for something original and i don't know how that contributed but bizarre combinations that were weren't really efficient like they played a huge role in this in my opinion um you know what do you say uh so yeah i think the so i think the flyers didn't work out for kiki unfortunately with his rush that uh where he got rushed rather and so using those against units didn't work out too well um, and then, uh, unfortunately, Renee's rush with Puglin. You got Yagami is just such a hard nut to crack, and yeah. Um, he yeah he just defended that super super well. So unfortunately, I think it was just uh, possibly even a unit matchup there because um, mm -hmm. or not not a yeah. unit matchup actually a tactic matchup because Yagami went a slower level three. And just built a ton of level twos. Maybe the level three came too early from Renee and Puglin, causing them to be a little bit behind in unit production. Uh, I honestly miss a, a lot of that part of the battle because uh, we were watching all those flyers that Kiki had up. But um, it's only been 13 minutes so far. Do you actually just want to go into the second game in the same video? I feel like we can do that. Let's go, yeah. Yeah, let's do yeah. that. Let's do that. Yeah. So here is the same teams on Beardus Ravine. So what do you think, Marco, about this map? You haven't seen it really on the channel that much. No, uh, I don't think I've Let's ever played it that often, actually. It's interesting to see what will happen here. Uh, surely not one of the classical maps. I want to see what the strategies in these are. Yeah, um, so here's my take. I've, I've played this quite a bit. And I like it because the th three people on the same team spawn very close to each other. And uh, mm -hmm. it gets kind of like an eroded duos type vibe. There's three yeah. areas. There's a mid here for the central players. Then there's a top uh -huh. for the top players and a bottom for the bottom players to fight over. 
Um, uh -huh. And so it, this map does devolve into three separate 1v1s most of the time. That being said, there are a lot of interesting channels and waterways where uh, players could choose to run sneak attacks, do doubles, raids, things like that. A lot of the coal piles are easily raidable from the water here, which is really nice. And you do have easy access to go directly to the lab uh, as well. So I, I think um... there's, a, there's a lot of cross-play for flyers. Uh, Hello. And if you guys hadn't noticed at home, we have level 2 flyers in this mod. We're playing on Tellurian Public Beta right now. And Hello. level 2 flyers is one of the features Ready, of the boy. beta. Oh, yeah, Gami just gave a punch to Puglin. What disrespect. Oh, and Puglin sneaks Ready, through boy. the fence anyways. I absolutely Hello. love it. Yagami yeah, sees. Yes. Nice Hello. play, nice. So on this map, I think Water Artillery could really do some big damage because they have access from uh, for all the points. And mm -hmm. I think lateral attack is the way to go. Like, not through the middle, but from the lateral yeah, side Yeah, of that the makes map. a lot of sense. Um, oh, I do Ready like boys. the... Uh, Puglin decided to send just more hench to, to outnumber boys. Yagami here, and Yagami's Hello. responding in kind with even more hench of his Hello. own uh, to try to get off so the main base. <laughs> yeah. Kiki's going for an early Sending. mid. We have some level 2s coming out uh, from the Tell team. And Puglin following up with his own fence here. Generally, I actually like to fence one lower. Uh, it's a little bit shorter, and it gives you a little bit more space to see enemy units coming. Also, your enemy ranged units can't sneak right in here to attack henchmen. And snipe, that's right. I was thinking about that. Uh, and then Rene, content to take this uh, first expo before going mid, which is mirroring Skitter. And Skitter, what are these? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Armadillo oh, Bolas, wow, I love these guys. High defense, slow, so they're cheap on the EHP. Uh, we got this stat here, which is actually power, even though it says sight radius. Uh, so if you're watching at home and wondering what that is, this is a stat that is used. It's a combination of damage, HP, and defense. Uh, it's used to determine what level a creature is. And it I looks like these. Will broke his fence to start attacking down here with some forward sound beams against Yagami. Absolutely love this. A forward chamber as well. We also have action in mid with Wham! Elias coming out with the wolf eels. And what is this? The, a camel eel with E-burst? Very, very funny. And then we have so our, our action third going on. Up on the top. Yeah, this is actually as a commentator, it's kind of hard to keep up with these 3v3s. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Skitter going for this generator. I think that's a really, really strong play. Uh, if Renee doesn't notice that, because it's kind of tucked away in the corner outside of vision. And Yagami with this. Oh, horse oog pisters. With deflect, oh that is going to be tough to fight against. Uh, Will has. What are these? B champ is not real? What? <laughs> I'm, I am absolutely real. There is still no he's, proof of it. He's so. talking to me through the from the past to the future <laughs> with his unit names. <laughs> and it looks like Kiki is so the the yellow units and the orange units are actually oh my gosh that was shocking. Wow, amazing, amazing. Uh, didn't do a ton of damage actually to to Kiki's units, but. Yeah. Uh, I mean, Kiki does have yellow level threes here. Uh, Will does need to take this geyser soon, uh, but he's focusing on all these defenses. Oh, but the artillery is going to come and take out these sound beam towers. This is going to be a tough defense for Will. He needs to start building up units back here, Fuck. possibly even retreating henchmen back to this expo. Uh, but Kiki's doing great, and Renee holding this area really, really strong. Whoa. Uh, and mm -hmm. building on that geyser. This is absolutely perfect. We're seeing a really great game from the tell team controlling and mining all of the middle spots so if they can hold this position they're eventually going to beat the uh the sickest cunts and when it comes to resources yeah it's looking great for the tell team a uh, really intense yagami battle here he seems to have the perfect counter all the time like when we'll build the fences and sound beams he has the artillery when he had the range he had the the deflect so it's looking really 
pretty good for Yagami now. Yeah, Kiki has a few land units that are actually just kind of stuck here in the middle. They're not going to be able to go in and attack Elias, even though he has all Ready of board. this. I, I, I'm sure he's wishing that he had water units right about now so that he could go up and attack oh, Elias' nice. henchmen. Uh, but he's not going to be able to do that right now. Mm. Elias, in the meantime, is actually mm. helping with uh, Yagami trying to take over this bottom portion. I think this is a really good move for Elias, recognizing that Kiki's not going to be able to attack him and that he lost the center area, so instead he's going to help Yag Yagami try to take this top top zone. Mm -hmm. Oh, but he does have the flash flyers coming in. Oh, it's that, the skitter's flash fl flyers. And Kiki retreating back to some anti-air towers. That's a good move by Kiki. Will with the digging! Oh, I wish I would have got that live. Here they come. Uh, just digging underneath all the enemy units and popping up to surprise them so they, the artillery aren't able to really acquire a good signal. Ready, and Kiki friends. with a gyro drop. This is exactly what you want to see from all the land units. This is going to do a lot of damage to Yagami's economy, not being able to mine oh. from right there. Yagami's trying to move up top to the workshop, but I mean, now he's, his units are going to get pincered in. Um, but he does have the high ground up here. It's just a camelfish, guys. Excellent. I love the mass artillery. Taking out the anti-air towers is going to be good uh, if they want to go in for a flyer rush. And actually, we're seeing TSC gain some ground now. Yeah, that's true. Let's see what um, Skitter will deal with these Boladillas. I absolutely love them. Like They sound like something you would order from a Mexican restaurant. <laughs> Um, it looks like Rene has still got the, um, huge advantage on Skitter. Skitter does have these little fours, which is pretty good, but Rene just has all of these defenses. Skitter coming out with melee against Rene's flyers is not going to be a good matchup. And here's the artillery battle just slinging, uh, at each other in mid. And Kiki is running away with all these resources in mid. It's going to be hard to beat. Uh, Yagami in the meantime finally taking over this Ready, with the boy. hen shield. That's going to be really, really strong. And even all of Kiki's units uh, kind of didn't do a whole lot back here. I didn't notice that Kiki did have a few chambers come around uh, building some hippo cams to raid Yagami's base, uh, but it doesn't seem to be deterring him at all. Kiki offering to build some chambers. This is really good teamwork, trying to help Puglin defend his lab. Because uh, Kiki has not been making too much ground in mid. Again, having only those land units uh, until level 4 has not helped. A few amphib units coming out, but uh, I don't think these chambers are going to survive against everything that mm. Yagami has. Uh, so Kiki had two level 3s that couldn't be able to swim. I wonder if he relied entirely on gyrocopter drops, because that's a really bizarre choice in my opinion. Yeah, I agree. Um, he also made this map, so... <laughs> if he makes it... Uh, okay. He must have had something in mind if he had, was doing something like that with this map. It's even worse. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Skitter coming in with the flash flyers. So funny. <laughs> It's, it's funny because both sides have range, so I'm not even sure it does that much. Um, <laughs> yeah. But oh, Skitter's not confused. really able to do a lot. He can't penetrate uh, Rene up here, who has the high ground bonus on these hills. And uh, that gives ranged units like a 10-15% damage bonus. And so Rene really content to hold this and just uh, starve Skitter out of resources. Rene has a great advantage, staying there all the time. Oh my gosh, and look at Yagami, the wow. flood of purple just coming through. <laughs> amazing, amazing by Yagami, just uh, able to take over this whole island or, or bottom portion of the map. Uh, really, really strong comeback by him. And a uh, great job by the Sickest Cunts also just defending this this area, even against all of Kiki's hippo cams. Ready, boy. Um, slowly uh -huh. able to hold off these choke points is going to be strong. Oh, actually. <laughs> actually, it does not look like Skitter's doing well holding uh -huh. off uh, the Tillery Axe. Uh, yeah. 
So yeah, Gummy is doing great, but Renee and Kiki are also doing really good. So yeah, oh my gosh, is this gonna be a base now. race? Yagami is coming in. Who's at level five? That's Renee at level five. Oh, that is bad yeah. news for the sickest cunts. Uh, but Yagami is in the Sluriax base with a lot of units. These are only level threes though. So yeah. if Renee can just build a few chambers, which it looks like she is, she should be able to defend this attack. Oh, but the level fours are creeping in. This is actually, oh my oh. God. This just got into a really crazy base race. Hmm, Renee should have moved in now. Yep, yeah, that's what she's with doing. Yeah, level fives. Um, but Yagami keeps assisting uh, back here, and Pocklin has lab defense on. He's got absolutely nothing. Uh, switching targets is good. We need to attack Kiki, but Renee's building these level 5 artillery, which is going to be really, oh. really hard. The gap between level 4 and level 5 is really tough to beat. I mean, the gap between level 3 and level 5 is even bigger. Um, yeah. Oh my That's gosh. Huge. Yeah, and Kiki coming in. I think this game... I think this is going because of Renee's level five. I think that they're going to be able to defend this. Um, yeah. Uh, oh my God. Lab just blew. No, that wasn't lab. No, my bad. Workshop, workshop just blew. <laughs> that was a workshop. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> it wasn't lab. <laughs> oh, look at okay, all so... of this hen shield that wow. Kiki has. Absolutely insane. Um, and, yes. and they have no defenses over uh in in the right base right now even though yagami is coming in with punishing attacks uh Rene is just defending and destroying all of these units oh. uh and lab defense is gonna is gonna allow will to hold out and i think i mean kiki could go for yagami's base here start yeah exactly just like this if you can start yagami on lab defense that's gonna be really really big mm -hmm. skitter yeah, I mean, Kiki with the level 4 is coming in everywhere um, to attack the labs. I think they, yeah, they should, they won this, right? Yes, yeah, like Yagami can do, can do everything on his, no, on his own, definitely. Yeah. And both Kiki and Renee have huge amounts of creatures. Yeah. So nothing, I mean, not much to do against that. They both have lab defense of their own, too. And these level 5s are just tearing through these level 4s. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely fantastic. I mean, you have lab defense on from Yagami and Elias. Uh, before lab defense goes on from Kiki or Renee, that means that um, right now they're just trying to hope that Will, I guess, dies sooner, runs out of lab defense sooner so they can get one yeah. person. But they're never going to be able to get these two. And the hench punch coming in. Hench f punching through the electric field. <laughs> what is Yagami healing <laughs> themselves? <laughs> he was trying to guard the lab. I think he put guard on the lab and started healing himself. <laughs> yeah, and there goes a lot of and Yagami turns off. punches against two hammers. Okay. Yeah. So Yagami is done. Oh my gosh, Whoa. that was fantastic! Wow, let's let's unpack that, Marco. What happened in that game? Oh my god, it was amazing to watch. One of the best games I've seen, honestly. Like, so much offense from both sides, you can never tell who is the definite winner until the end. You know, it's crazy. I actually kind of wish I could slow down these recordings so I could try to make sure to capture all and commentate all the things that are going on. Um, but absolutely fantastic game super well played by both sides i mean in the end um i i think that renee's ability to hold against skitter and gets level five quickly was the deciding factor mm -hmm. because uh kiki um just wasn't able to penetrate with the with the ground units through to elias even though he had all of mid and done a fantastic job gaining control uh, maintaining control there um but it when yagami came through wiped poglin off the bottom island it came into the base then it was just renee's little five that absolutely saved them uh the, the tellurian team from getting yagami <laughs> yeah yeah that was really intimidating on his side 
but I think I agree with you, like the deciding factor, or at least one of the deciding factors, was definitely Rene not letting Skitter go up the mount and getting resources and stacking them up all the time. Like, it was huge. Yeah, absolutely. Um, very well played by everybody. Awesome job uh, uh, to, to both teams. And the, the, the games are one and one right now. So it looks like the winner of this next game is going to decide the match bet between uh, the Sickest Cunts and the Teleriacs. So, Highlands. Go to Highlands. Yeah. yeah. Here we go. I'm taking a plane right now. Let's go. All we need right. to take out all so enemy game labs. Three, Let's get to it. Best two out of three series. There's Renee, Kiki, Puglin versus Elias down here. So it looks like Puglin actually changed to red. Interesting wow. move. That's okay. that's gotta throw him off. I, is okay. my game broken? I wonder if my replay is broken. Um, and then we got um... Yagami in purple, and we got <laughs> Skitter up top. So this is actually uh, another Renee Skitter up top. Renee's already shown that mm -hmm. she can do a great job keeping Skitter at bay uh, and getting the competitive resources. Um, True. But we have switched. It's going to be Kiki versus Yagami and Elias versus a red Puglin. Must be a red, red angry Puglin. Puglin. I don't know who this is going to throw off more. Is this going to throw off Will more, or is it going to throw off the enemy team because they're not going to understand who Red is? Yeah, yeah, they are going to think it's Rene, right? And yeah, well, I mean, yeah, Rene used to play as Red. Yeah. So Will got angry. He turned from the good side to the, the yeah. to the evil side. Now Green he's Red. Hulk to Red Hulk. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Yagami going for his back island first. Uh, Kiki opting to go for a more aggressive play. Uh, I like this a lot, going for the this more aggressive expansion first, because even though it doesn't have the geyser with it, um, it has a more competitive geyser, you can partner with this other player to go for with a forward uh, workshop and then uh, make sure to take this whole section for, them, for yourself. Oh, but it looks like Puglin is actually... Building a, a chamber over here, or rather, Renee built Puglin's chamber. Looks like they're going to do a double rush on Skitter. Oh, yeah, this is they're big. Taking him. But there's a water rush coming in on Puglin, and he doesn't have the units near his base. Uh, so Kiki is going to have to defend Puglin against these massive girths. Massive girths. What? <laughs> oh, gosh. The f this is going to be tough for Puglin, and. You can already see fences coming down from Elias. Does Will mm -hmm. Will does see this and he's not doing anything to stop it? Does he even recognize that a rush is coming? Oh, he's going in on the attack against Skitter. And this is gonna this is gonna hey. wipe Skitter off the map, these these few units here. Uh if micro properly, which is, yeah, it looks like it's going really, really well, but Puglin come is gonna get wrecked by these i mean this is 13 damage pack hunter plus frenzy i guess the frenzy just ran out and puglin unable to guard his lightning rods um or his sound beam tower from all this barrier destroy but kiki's coming in to save the day so it really matters what yagami is gonna do next is yagami gonna save skitter or go on an attack against kiki and it looks like it looks like skitter is actually able to kind of defend himself using Ready, his henchmen boy. Uh, Renee pulling back, but just building up forces, consolidating, and then coming back in for more offense. Uh, this really should be Skeeter's demise, especially if Renee keeps trickling units in. Uh, Puglin now zero lightning rods, uh, no electricity production, but Kiki able to defend. Oh my gosh, so much is going on, and Yagami is going on the offensive to attack Kiki's expo here. Uh, Kiki not yet reacting, yeah. still spawning hench. They're starting to retreat. And Kiki's going to have to react with all of these units to defend his own. But it looks like Skitter's, uh, Skitter's really out of the game. Not collecting anything except electricity. No coal. All, all of his henchmen are almost dead. Uh, he doesn't have a way to convert. Oh, actually, no, he has this over here. 
Oh, this is actually really good for Skitter. If he can manage to build up an uh well no his his he should is going build another lines. Yeah yeah yeah. Yeah, this is this I mean, is not he's down four. Is, yeah. Uh, but Yagami coming in with a ton of units to Kiki's base. Nah. Kiki opted for an aggressive play, actually attacking Elias instead of defending his own lab. Skitter is gone, out of the game. Oh my gosh. And Kiki is not level 3. And so he's going to have to... Def oh, oh my gosh. gosh, his lab might go down here. Renee's going to try to come in, but it's not going to... Oh, this isn't going to work. Renee has to go yeah. for Yagami's lab. Um, Kiki, Kiki's out of the game. Kiki's done. Kiki's oh, done. Oh gosh, yes. Oof. Kiki completely out of the game. And Will has basically nothing. Um, oh gosh, no. Kiki was unable to kill Elias before he died. And that's going to be the game because Will doesn't have anything. All these henchmen over here, but it's just, it's not going to be enough to defend his lab against... Uh, even just a few things that are right here. Uh, and then Renee is not going to be able to take, I mean, all of these mass range units. Wow. Yeah. That's oh what gosh. I was keeping in in the back of my head, that Yagami wasn't appearing on, on the battle scene. So that meant he was saving up. And I, I was thinking about the future of the game, what was going to happen. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah, it is game over and the set goes to the sickest cunts yeah and there it is oh, yeah wow that was awesome oh my gosh that was so cool um wow I, you know i really thought that slurry eggs had that game i thought they, they did a great job yeah. killing skitter um, and Elias was on his deathbed, but Yagami just coming through the mass range, going straight for Kiki. Um, wow. I love it when everyone just rushes each other, and it's a base race to see who can, who's the better rusher. Uh, and it, it, but what's funny about this one is Yagami didn't actually even rush. He just kind of took his time, went a slower level 2, and massed a ton of level 2s. Um, relied on his yeah. yeah oh my gosh yeah he boomed he did a, a fast boom at level two messing up those those spiders that was crucial like they're so good yeah <sighs> the masses you can you can take them if there are so many they're just too good that was a really fantastic set uh great way to kick off the commentaries for the triples league i think we're gonna have a lot of really juicy games coming out um from this triples league and that's that was kind of the point is to, to create a an awesome 3v3 league so we can get some 3v3 commentaries in uh there's so much going on and there's so much that can happen with these games we have a bunch of really amazing teams so um yeah thank you guys for watching marco do you have any final words I want to say that if the sickest cans are overpowered, it's just Beecham's fault because he made the teams. So <laughs> you know who to point the finger at. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Definitely my fault. All right, thank you guys for watching, and stay tuned for more videos.